Hello Sector Watchers, welcome to the 24th episode of Sector Spotlight for Tuesday the 31st of March 2020, which I am recording on Monday the 30th. This is your weekly update on sector rotation and anything remotely connected to relative strength and or rotational analysis. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I am your host for today's show, based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sector Spotlight. The agenda for today includes a thorough look at what's happening in the various asset classes at the moment. We'll quickly go over the current sector rotation in the US. We'll have a break. After the break, we'll have a look at the seasonal expectations for the month of April. And we'll review the outstanding pair trades that we've launched previously in the show. So to start, let's take a look at what happened last week. Remember, this is Monday through Friday uh, for a full week, not the Tuesday to Tuesday as we do on a live show. Um, massive performance for real estate, over 23%, uh, followed by a very good week for stocks. ITOT up 14%. And then we have high yield. This is the benchmark up 9% VBI and X. And we have corporate bonds, commodities, um, treasuries only up 60 basis points last week. And then the dollar was down 4.5%. If we make that relative, we can simply do that by clicking um, this ticker symbol here, which is our VBI and X. And we see outperformance for real estate uh, equities, stocks, uh, high yield, and then the rest is underperforming. So, you know, look at these numbers. There are still wide, wide swings. Um, I expect that to continue for a while during these uncertain, volatile times. Um, but nevertheless, it's a good habit to uh, just take a brief moment and look back what has actually happened, because sometimes that can actually differ from what is happening uh, in your mind. At least um, for me, it does. Sometimes I have in my head that something happened and you look back at the real numbers and there's, well, not completely different, but substantially different. If we move to the, um, to the sectors, this is the perf chart for our sectors. Good week across the board. All sectors uh, recorded a positive return uh, led by utilities up almost 24% and then real estate, not surprisingly, was a good asset class as well. Industrials, energy, financials, materials, healthcare, still up almost 14%. Here's the S&P, 13.7. And then the laggers are discretionary technology, staples and communication services. If we make that a relative by clicking on the spy symbol, then we see that the um, Underperformance this week is predominantly coming from com communication services down 7.6 on a relative basis and um, utilities up 10.2 and real estate up almost 9. What I want to do next is actually talk you through my investment pyramid. And uh, that's this one. You've seen that before. Let me position my chart here to the right. I'm going to align that with a few things here. So let me bring up the RRG for asset classes. And here I'm going to bring up my chart list for asset classes. And then I can toggle back and forth. And I want to basically see how far we get going through all these charts. So real estate, if we highlight real estate here using VNQ, powering into the lagging quadrant and a while ago it was looking promising but that turned around very quickly the last couple of weeks and as you can see the um, little green um, area around the box indicates I, that's how i set it up that my previous um, judgment was green so outperformance and I have now changed that to red underperformance. And that's primarily based on this rotation on the weekly chart where V and Q is rapidly um, rotating into the lagging quadrant. If we do that on the price chart here, we'll see that this drop off in relative strength 
has caused the short period that it went through weak through improving has now come to an end and it's now back into lagging and it seems to be back uh, with a vengeance because we dropped below the uh, 2018 lows in relative strength. So real estate is now a clear underperformer. If we jump to government bonds, GOVT, that's a completely different story. Uh, it's powering deep into the leading quadrant. It's the leading sector at the moment. It's the strongest one on the RS ratio scale. Um, definitely an outperformer. And if we look at the chart here, we'll see that it has broken out of this consolidation pattern, jumped higher, managed to stay above that former resistance now support area. And the, uh, the move in relative strength doesn't need any uh, further clarification. That is, uh, that is a super strong move. So government bonds, safe haven for the time being. Um, and I don't see any signs of this rolling over anytime soon. Maybe a consolidation, but that's probably about it. If we move to the next one, that's high yield. It's a high yield ETF that just came from lagging and rotated into improving. And I actually think that this is a promising uh, asset class at the moment. If we look at the high yield graph, we see that obviously it had a, uh, a super strong decline, but you see that the relative is coming to it. Is it the, the downtrend in relative is coming to an end. It's stalling here. And that's reflected in the upturn of the RRG lines, which are now both moving upwards with the RS momentum line already above 100, which positions HYG insight improving. Um, so it seems to be following the other asset classes here, which are especially government bonds and corporate bonds that we, that we will see later. And this is the US dollar, by the way. So high yield and outperform doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that prices will go up. Don't 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 get me wrong. Um, it is it's it's saying that uh, high yield is likely to outperform um, VBI and X. So less bad, maybe I should say. We go to stocks, ITOT, broad market, total US stock market. Well, no surprise here. Clearly moving into lagging, rotating into lagging was there already for two weeks. Uh, remains an underperformer in my investment pyramid. And if we take a quick look at the chart for ITOT, then we see that it is actually respecting the lows of 2018. If we bring this back a little bit further, we see that this area here uh, seems to be an important support area. So that's the area, let's say, around 50, roughly. I mean, a dollar more or less nowadays is not really a big deal. Um, we're already trading around 57 now. So for the time being, this support level has held. But this is a real change of structure. And it is definitely a real change of structure in the relative strength line. So um, before these RRG lines and this RS line will turn up, uh, we need a lot more consolidation, um, uh, price discovery, relative strength discovery to find out where the real buyers are that are strong enough to actually catch this falling knife and, and provide enough support for this market to, um, to come to a standstill. So for the time being, be very careful with long-term positions, short-term trading. You guys will have a field day. It's going everywhere. You got big moves, uh, great environment for day traders. If you're a little bit longer term orientated, make sure that you don't get in too early because the risks are still um, substantial, I would say. Um, quickly to the US dollar, powering into the leading quadrant. I have it here at neutral. And the reason for that is that, especially the chart here, if we bring that up, this is, a, this is a chart that basically tells me in little words, I have no idea where I'm going. Um, we had this nice trading range, which probably is still maybe intact. If we forget about this, I don't really know, but this is just 
these big swings tell me that it is very, very difficult um, to call this market right now. Uh, we've got 95 to let's round it off 105. That's a big move in the US dollar. Um, so I'll be very careful of that and blue means neutral. I, I don't know where it's going. I'm not going to make a, uh, a definite call whether it's going to uh, be stronger or weaker. Relative strength looks good. I'll, I'll give you that. For the time being, relative strength looks good. So US dollar is likely to be uh, a strong asset. Let's see what happens in the coming weeks. If we go to commodities, that is one of our weakest, if not, well, it's the weakest asset class that we have. Um, it's deep inside the lagging quadrant. It's, it's leveling off a little bit, but not much. And if we go to the, um, to the chart of commodities, that is, well, you can, you can tell me what you think. This is not looking good. This is actually looking really, really bad. Um, we just broke about uh, below this important support level here, which was around 20. We, we just wrecked it as if it didn't exist. Um, and I can actually make this chart go back even further. And you will see that this is a, uh, this is a serious and important breakdown. Um, famous quote, don't, don't um, take the bottom of the chart as support. Uh, don't confuse the bottom of the chart as support and that's the case here because this will actually start to move lower uh, if it needs to be relative strength down the drain there is I cannot come up with any good reason to buy commodities or at least this ETF at the moment um, let's quickly wrap it up with the corporate bonds uh, LQD green outperforming Outperforming meaning beating VBI and X in coming weeks. At least that's the um, that's the idea. And if we bring up the chart for LQD, we see a very nice move in relative. It has held important support levels. We bring, make this a little bit longer. We can see that these charts are respecting their previous lows. It's a little bit in a rough area. I mean, it's like this is 103 to 106. So it's about a support range of three US dollars, um, which isn't too bad actually in times like this, if you move from 134 to 106 in a couple of weeks. Um, this bounce is very impressive. Um, very unlikely that this V shape will continue. So what I'm gonna look at is the, the next leg down, because that will, it's very likely that we will see another leg down, but, the, the crucial thing to watch is where that next low will come in. If that net, the higher that next low will come in above this, let's say 104 level, the stronger that is and the stronger this RS line will be. You see that it's already trying to take out its previous highs. So that's a positive, which makes corporate bonds a very interesting area um, to invest. If you need to be invested, if you don't need to be in cash, again, this is, very difficult to call whether this will be an absolute outperformer, whether, whether it will be uh, performing in absolute price terms, but in relative terms, it's very likely that it will outperform VBI and X uh, versus the other asset classes that we have here. Okay, that was asset classes. Um, if we continue to sectors, and I'm going to speed things up a little bit because I was, because this is the 30th of the month, tomorrow is the last trading day, I was very tempted to, um, to go for the monthly charts, but I decided against it because um, it is still two trading sessions before this program will be, or two trading sessions before the monthly bars are really completed. Um, and that in this type of market, that's just way too long to actually um, gamble on judging uh, monthly bars. So we're gonna we're gonna postpone that to next week, uh, and then we'll have a uh, an extensive uh, overview of what's happening with all the sectors. I quickly want to continue in the investment pyramid. I see that I already punched it a little bit too far. Let's um, let's complete this uh, here quickly. The um, the yield curve. We're not going to look at the charts, but it's very clear that the longer end of the curve is um, where you should be positioned. That's where the performance is. I have grayed out my commodity universe because I'm not very happy with the um, with the symbols that I'm using there. These are the iPad commodity ETFs, ETNs. 
Uh, and I'm going to look if I can find a different universe because um, it's, it's very difficult to keep track of. They're, they're sort of illiquid. Um, long story short, just not very happy with, uh, with those data series. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can find something else, something better that we can stick in here. So for the time being, I'm leaving them gray. Um, then we go into stocks and then we work with the S&P 500. I have made that green here uh, because we have this international markets comparison. Again, not going to do that right now. It's in the drop down on the RRG if you want to look at it. But if you compare the, R the S&P 500 US market with international markets, it's actually not too bad. I mean, percentage wise, the declines are horrific, but there are countries that are doing much worse. So the S&P compared to the global index is actually inside the leading quadrant and it's traveling to the top right. So lo and behold, we're still doing good there. If we go uh, and have a look at the individual sectors, and again, I'm gonna speed things up a little bit here to have some time for other items. Um, if we look at the, uh, at the charts here, then XLB uh, still inside lagging going up a little bit, but a very short tail. So we keep that at an underperform judgment because um, we need a lot more to, to turn this beast around. Communication services remains very close to the benchmark. Um, so we're gonna keep that at a neutral because it's more or less performing in line with the S&P 500. So not really a, a sector to, uh, to get some alpha. We go to energy. That is, well, there is no doubt about it. That is the weakest sector in the universe. Just avoid energy and you'll already outperform the S&P 500. There's no doubt about it. Um, if you chop in some financials on the short side, then you will be doing very good because I do think that financials are a clear underperformer. Um, not a lot of good things coming out of that. We're going to look at the charts next week more in depth, but you know, for the time being, this tail, this tail is moving into lagging uh, and not showing any signs of recovery. And the same goes for industrials traveling into the lagging quadrant, no signs for recovery. Uh, energy has the longest tails. These tails are, are decent enough to, to show enough power behind those moves. Now the good stuff is coming from technology. It's inside the leading quadrant, a very short tail, which means that it is a stable trend. There is, there is no real momentum, but there's also not real downward momentum and it is still strong. So it's justified to keep that as an outperformance recommendation. Here's a change, as you can see, the, um, the boundary is blue and that's the consumer staple sector that has now definitely entered the leading quadrant and that chart is now rapidly improving. So uh, Staples has now joined the sectors inside the leading quadrant and these are the sectors that should give you a safe haven, haven at least in relative terms. Real estate here is a different animal. Um, it's not looking too great. It's starting to roll over. So I am keeping this as a neutral uh, because I'm absolutely not sure how that goes. It's supposedly a defensive sector, but I just don't see it at the moment. It's, it's, it's starting, you see that the observations here are getting closer to each other. So the velocity, RRG velocity is declining. The tail seems to be shortening, um, which is usually not a very good sign if it starts to roll over. So be very careful with, um, with real estate at this point in time. And then we have utilities, well inside leading, um, consolidating a little bit now on, on the tail leveling off, but still one of the better sectors, one of the safer sectors to be in. Same with healthcare, that just rolled back up. Look at this very nice rotation from leading into weakening, back into leading. And we know that these are usually strong rotations. So from a relative point of view, healthcare, definitely worth keeping an eye on. Um, we had healthcare as an underperformer based on the seasonal work that we're doing. Uh, that just didn't work out this year. Obvious reasons, a lot of eyes on, on healthcare at the moment, but um, for the time being, healthcare is definitely one of the sectors that you wanna keep in your portfolio uh, to protect yourself from super big declines. Definitely if you need to outperform a benchmark. 
and then finally we go to consumer discretionary i this is like communication services this is very close to the benchmark not doing a lot look at that tail that is super short all these tails are five weeks look at the difference between some of these tails and then you see discretionary it's just sitting there not doing a lot just you know hovering around going around a little bit that tail is super short very close to the benchmark not a lot of alpha to be gained there uh, so for the time being leave that at neutral staying very close to the benchmark this wraps up the first part of the show we're going to go for a quick 30 second break and after that we'll have a look at the seasonals for the coming month of april and we'll have a look at what's happening in our pair trade ideas so stay tuned we'll be back in 30 seconds Welcome back and thanks for staying with me. Um, as you know, I'm keeping an eye on seasonal patterns uh, at least once a month. And I've, I've put all these seasonal data series in this spreadsheet, which allows me to visualize those seasonal patterns uh, either per sector or per month. Um, as we, by the way, this spreadsheet is still uh, for grabs. If you would like a copy uh, for your own use, then drop me an email and I'll be happy to send that over to you. Uh, I'll maintain this spreadsheet from time to time to make sure that it has the most recent data uh, entered into it. If we filter out, then what we're going to do, we're going to actually look at the month of March, which is here. And what you see here what i'm trying to look for are very high or very low seasonal numbers and these are the numbers that you're looking at uh, the bars and the table below is the percentage of months that that sector is outperforming the s p 500. Um, i'd say anything in the 30s area or the 30 or below or 70 or higher that's that's what triggers my interest other than that it's just too much of a coin toss and if we look at the, and then what I try to do is I actually try to, uh, to match that seasonal pattern with what I see on the RRG. And if both match, then um, we may have an interesting uh, situation to, uh, to keep an eye on. Now for this month, unfortunately, there are not a lot of big outliers. Um, the biggest outlier is for utilities, and that is immediately probably the only one that is worth taking a look at real estate is at 70 percent outperformance but um that is a that series is much shorter than the other series in this universe and that xlre because of the the, the reshuffling of the sectors um looks back only so many years and it's predominantly a bull market which makes it very difficult <clears throat> to uh, to actually gauge the seasonal pattern of that so i'm going to sort of deny and not look at that one utilities on the other hand 75 percent of the time in the month of march utilities outperformed the s p 500 and if we look at the rrg we see that utilities are actually inside the leading quadrant and doing pretty well so that makes utilities uh, an interesting sector to keep an eye on. I think that's probably the only sector for this month that is worthwhile uh, looking at. Uh, healthcare is in the 30s, that's at 35%. Usually that is an underperforming sector, but that does not match with what I see on the RRG, because as we've seen uh, earlier on, healthcare is inside the leading quadrant and pushing further into that. That doesn't really match with an underperforming month. So I'm gonna skip that one. Um, uh, that's probably not gonna be aligned this year. And the other, the other um, uh, sectors, communication services at 67, coming close, but as we've seen, that is super close to the benchmark. So I'm, it's very hard to see a strong outperformance for the communication services sector in this month. Um, if we quickly look at how this, what this means in terms of percentages, then we see 
Uh, again, this big outlier for uh, real estate with 2.7%. That's that big bar that you see, that big gray bar at the end there. Uh, and the utility sector expected average outperformance 0.8, so 80 basis points better than the S&P 500. So I'm going to focus on the seasonal pattern for utilities in the coming month. I have a few minutes left to wrap up the show and quickly go over the pair trades that we have discussed in previous shows. On the left hand side are the trades that are open as far as I'm concerned and on the right hand side you see the RRG that holds those trades. If we quickly go over uh, the first one is T row versus PFG. Um, PFG is the one that's making us money. Um, but if I look at the ratio chart, we, we were up way, way better than we are right now. So I've decided to, uh, to close out this trade and, uh, and, and collect the, uh, the gains. If we go to Coca-Cola KO versus WBA, then KO rolled over. That was not what I expected. And um, WBA moved, started to move upwards. So, Again, if we look at the ratio chart of that, uh, that sort of did it a little bit okay and then rolled over and we're just, market gives us a new opportunity to get out at a relatively small loss here. So I'm gonna take that opportunity and say goodbye to this one. Um, the third one is Apple versus IBM. Apple still on the right hand side, IBM on the left hand side. They are rolling over, but there's not, it's not working as I would expect a good pair trade to work. Uh, and especially if you look at the ratio directly, you see that it, you know, it peaked, it broke out, but it reversed. Uh, so not worth waiting uh, around any longer. Uh, collecting just a small gain, that's, that's fine. Uh, there are plenty of opportunities probably coming our way in the near future. The third one uh, is SPY versus IEV. That one was coming from the uh, comparison of international stock indexes. Uh, SPY obviously is the benchmark in this RRG. If you look at IEV, that's inside lagging and rolling, continuing further into that. And if we look at that chart directly, then you see that we had a good start of the trade. We came back to this breakout level and it seems to be holding up right now. So I'm gonna give this a little chance. We put in a higher low. Um, so I'm gonna stay with this one for the time being. And then the last one was based on what we did on equal weight versus uh, cap weighted ETFs. And that one is XLF versus RYF. And they're very close together. Um, if you look at the daily version of this, then it's, it's a similar picture. RYF is now taking over XLF a little bit, but I'm gonna give this a little bit more leeway because we entered that trade last week. So I'm gonna give this a little bit more uh, room to, to wiggle. And we have this breakout level here. That was basically the reason why I went this, with this trade because XLF broke out of that um, of that resistance level and it's still holding up holding up above that level so i'm going to stick with this one uh, for the time being don't have a new trade right now i just couldn't find a really nice trade a really nice setup uh, and i don't want to take uh, too many big risks in this volatile market so this is it for now um, and stay tuned we're going to keep an eye open for new opportunities ladies and gentlemen this was the 24th episode of sector spotlight thank you for watching Please don't be a stranger and stay in touch. Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday, 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern. Especially during these crazy times, we welcome your feedback, questions and suggestions as input for the show. So if you have anything to say, don't be shy and drop me an email. If you want to stay up to date on sectors and RRGs, please go to the RRG blog at stockcharts.com and subscribe using the link below each article. Please stay safe and I hope to see you back next week. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds.
We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.